Hey guys, in today's video I'll be going through the equations of motion for Mechanics 1 and I'll go through a couple of examples just to ensure that these equations do make sense. Now I think it'll be a good time if you can just to pause your screen just to note down these four equations if you don't know them already. Um, all the symbols have been defined so please do note them down if you don't know them already. Um, I also just wanted to highlight a common mistake students make with equation 2, this one here. And that is with this letter S, so equation 3 and 4 also. Um, S is defined as displacement and not distance. And I'll try and define what the difference between the two are with this little diagram here. Um, say, for instance, a person starts at a point A and he decides to walk downwards a distance 10 metres and then decides to turn back on himself 3 metres. Distance is defined as the total area covered that he's walked. And so in this case, the distance would be 10 plus 3, which is 13 meters. Displacement, on the other hand, is defined as the distance from the point where you start to where you finish. So in this case, I, the, the person started at point A and finished at this point over here. And so the distance between this point and A is 7 meters. So displacement, in this case, is 7 meters. And this is what you would substitute into equations 2, 3, and 4. Now just to emphasise this point further, if that boy decided to continue his journey all the way back to A, like so, the distance in this case would be 10 plus 3 plus 7, which is 20 metres. Displacement being defined as the distance from the point where you start to where you finish. If you finish where you started, then your displacement will be 0 metres. Okay, so I hope that clears up any confusion between displacement and distance and I'll fit in my examples below. <coughs> the first example I have here is a particle which is on a table. Um, it's given an initial velocity of 5 meters per second. Um, it's got a deceleration of minus 2 meters per second squared and it, we're basically trying to calculate the velocity after the particle has traveled a displacement of three meters. Okay, um, whenever you get any mechanics questions, the first thing that you need to do is define your coordinate system. Okay, and what I mean by that is you need to define if up is positive, down is positive, if left or right is positive. Okay, so in this case, here, yeah, since it's just horizontal motion, I'm just going to define right as positive. <coughs> I could have done left as positive, but since I'm right-handed, I'm just going with right as positive. It makes no difference. If I said left is positive, then my calculations would have to be consistent with left being positive. Okay, so you can try one of these examples with right as positive and then do left as positive and see if you get the same answer. And you should if you've done it correctly. So, okay, since right is positive, the particle is given an initial velocity to the right, so u is positive 5. A is... Okay, this, this one can get a little bit confusing, but I hope I can try and make it clear for you. A is defined here as minus 2 meters per second squared to the right. The particle is decelerating to the right. Okay, so A would remain as negative 2 meters per second squared if that makes sense. Um, I'll try and repeat that. A is defined, A is decelerating to the right. Okay, so A would be defined as negative 2 meters per second squared to the right. Okay, um, so therefore I leave A as minus 2 meters per second squared here. Um, since the particle is moving to the right, it would be 3 meters, so it's positive 3 meters. And what we're trying to calculate is v. So the equation in this case that I would use would be v squared equals u squared plus 2as. So v squared is equal to 5 squared plus 2 multiplied by minus 2 multiplied by 3. So v squared is equal to 13, and therefore v is equal to 3.61 meters per second. Okay, so that's example one done, and I'll move on to example two. So, in this case I have a 
you're basically standing on the top of a building here and you've got a particle in your hand and you're just holding it in your hand and you just like move your hands and let the ball drop so that means the initial velocity would be zero meters per second um, it travels a displacement of 10 meters and we're trying to calculate the time taken for it to travel 10 meters so first thing as I said before we do anything is we define our coordinate system in this case I've decided to take down as positive the way I look at it is whichever way the motion of the ball is I always take that as positive that's the way my convention is so in this case the ball is moving down so I'll take down as positive as in the up above our example the ball was moving right so I took right as positive you can think of it that way so I write down the variables that I know. I know u is equal to zero. Okay, now s in this case, the ball moves downwards, so it moves a displacement downwards of 10 meters. Down is positive, so s is positive 10. Um, acceleration, since it's free fall, it will be gravity. And gravity is 9.81. Gravity acts downwards, downwards is positive, so a will be positive 9.81. So, since we're trying to work out the time taken, in this case I would say the most suitable equation would be this one here. S equals ut plus a half at squared. u is zero, so that will go. So I would just say 10 is equal to a half times by 9.81 times by t squared. This gives t squared to be 2.04 and therefore t would be equal to 1.43 seconds. Okay, so that's example two now. I'll move on to example three. Um, in this case, we've got a particle um, starts at point A, and you're standing on basically the ground and you throw, say for instance, you're holding a basketball, and you throw the basketball up in the air at a velocity of five meters per second, okay? So we're trying to calculate the distance or the displacement when the ball reaches maximum height, okay? So you've got a particle, you're holding a particle in your hand, you give it an initial velocity of five meters per second, and you're trying to calculate the displacement when the ball reaches its maximum height. Now, just for the understanding of this, if I have a ball here and I throw it up in the air, it will have this kind of motion like this. Okay, it's so on like this. Now the maximum height is this height here. Okay, sorry, that should be a straight, it's a straight line. Is this height here, max height. And the velocity that can be said at this point is zero. So V at this point is zero. If you see, the ball is given initial velocity, the velocity decreases, 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 reaches maximum height, and then it just drops back again. So. I don't know if you want to make a note in your book, the maximum height of any motion is reached, in this case, when the velocity is equal to zero. When the final velocity equals zero, then the particle has reached maximum height. Okay, so we know in this case, therefore, first of all, my coordinate system is up. Since the motion is upwards, I'm taking upwards as positive. U would be equal to five meters per second. Um, we know v will be equal to zero. A on this hand, a acts downwards. We're taking upwards as positive, so a will be equal to minus 9.81. And we're trying to calculate s. So the one that I would say is most suitable would be equal, would be this one here. v squared equals u squared plus 2as. v is zero. Cancel that out. So we're left with zero is equal to 5 squared plus 2 multiplied by minus 9.81 multiplied by s and just rearranging this I get 25 is equal to um, 2 multiplied by 9.81 multiplied by s and therefore s would be given as 1.27 meters okay and since the displacement is upwards I would expect a positive answer since I've taken upwards as positive as I've got here. So I know that this is correct in terms of its sign. 
so I hope this video has helped. Um, the best thing to do with these questions is try and do as many questions as you can in any textbook that you've been given or that you've bought. The more you do, the more you'll understand. Um, what I've tried to do is I've just tried to give you a brief understanding or a basic understanding of how to begin answering these questions. So just practice, 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 and I'm sure you'll become very good and you'll pass your exam. So have a great day. I hope this video has helped. Um, check out my other videos. Um, thank you very much.